Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Or if it's your first time, welcome to my channel. My name is Marlene and I talk about eating disorder recovery and everything related to healing the relationship with your own body, food and with movement. And let's dive right into the topic as we always do. And a bunch of you have actually asked me to make a video about water retention and edema in eating disorder recovery. And that topping can have so many levels as to it. So today we're gonna to talk about what water retention is, why it's happening and how you can cope with it. Also, we're gonna talk about how long it lasts and everything else that you need to know about this topic. So a lot of people who come from a restrictive eating disorder, and that can actually mean just under eating or over exercising. Restrictive does not always mean not eating anything. It just mean being in a caloric deficit for too long. A lot of people who are in recovery from that phase, from a diet or from an actual eating disorder, experience water retention. In my case, my water retention was extreme, up to the point where I could not fit into regular shoes because my feet were so swollen. It was very painful, it was very frustrating and definitely messed with my body image even more. So let's start with talking about why water retention happened. Water retention is a very, very common answer to restriction and especially to refeeding. Of course, whenever something like this happens and recovery overall, I would always advise you to see a doctor just to make sure that you're not in danger of refeeding syndrome and that you're just safe overall. But it still is a very common side effect and in most cases it's actually not dangerous. The first reason for water retention and edema in eating disorder recovery is actually the rehydration. So after a prolonged time of restriction, the body kind of holds back water to rehydrate the cells that have been not hydrated enough due to restriction. Water retention can also happen because your lymphatic system is weakened and malnutrition definitely has an impact on that. Your lymphatic system is actually there to get excess of like too much water. And when you're not eating enough and your body is trying to save energy, this is one of the systems that can shut down very early. And so just because you start eating again does not mean that all the systems run on 100% again. So this can be another reason for water retention. And since the metabolism is slowing down immensely when you're restricting yourself, that can also be a big reason because when your metabolism slows down and the body is kind of trying to hold on to everything and also to water. So once you eat a little bit more again, and some people also have like fluid restriction. So in this case, it might be even stronger. Once you eat and drink a little bit more again, the body is trying to hold on to everything because it's in a scarcity mindset and a scarcity state, and it doesn't know if it will get hydration soon again. So it will make sure to hold on to everything. Another very big and very important reason is electrolyte imbalance. A lot of people who have bulimia struggle with their electrolytes a lot. It can also happen for people with anorexia and also for like people who chronically diet. So every time we're restricting and bulimia and also like the purging has a big impact, that can have a huge impact on our electrolytes, mainly sodium and potassium. When these electrolytes get out of balance, which is also something that can even happen with somebody who's like over exercising and sweating a lot, when these hormones are get out of balance, that can have a huge impact on water retention and edema. And even though your electrolyte levels might appear normal again, and I really hope you get them checked at the doctor, the water retention can still continue to stay a little bit longer. And another reason is that especially low protein levels, which is something that we see in a lot of people who are restricting just because the body doesn't have the energy to retain muscle, Low protein levels can lead to the water leaking into the tissue and there with being held back and it can take quite some time for the body to actually restore muscle. I'm always using <laughs> this graph and those of you who've been following me for a while know it. Um, it's one of my favorite graphs, but it doesn't definitely shows how long the body actually takes to start repairing your muscle because it's definitely not the number one priority. The body wants to make sure that you're surviving and not that you're super, super muscular. So one of the reasons why it can take quite a long time for a lot of people in recovery to even starting to rebuild muscle is this. So this does certainly not mean that you have to start working out right away. In fact, then I, that actually can have a negative impact because then your body 
will, you know, focus on that again, will go back to a malnourished state, electrolytes might get out of balance again. So please do not take this as a sign to like start working out right away. It's more a sign of being patient and allowing yourself and allowing your body to get enough energy in to then being able to restore muscles. And the next reason is one of the reasons why water retention can last so long and these are hormonal imbalances. Oftentimes when we talk about hormonal imbalance in connection with edema and water retention, we talk about cortisol, aldosterone, or ADH. And these have a big impact on water retention, on the body holding back water. And these are also hormones that take quite a while to get back to balance because starvation is a huge stress factor for your body. <clears throat> and just because you're renourishing yourself does not mean that your nervous system goes back to normal. So as long as your nervous system is out of whack, and that can be the case for a lot of people in recovery, because then they stress out about eating too much, about what they eat, and their body is still also in starvation mode. So this can take a long time. Another hormone or like other hormonal factors that we don't talk about as much that also play a big role are estrogen and progesterone. These hormones are also known to have a big impact on water retention. And the interesting part is oftentimes people experience water retention, for instance, during pregnancy or also when they're menstruating, which is why people sometimes feel like more swollen when they are on their period. And that is because the estrogen and the progesterone levels drop when you have your period or also when you are pregnant. So these are also hormones that the body does not prioritize when you're in starvation because the body actually doesn't want you to be able to get pregnant, which is why so many people also lose their period. And so when these hormones are dropping during malnutrition and then you like start to renourish yourself, it can also have a big impact on holding back water. And in my case, for instance, the rehabilitation of these hormones took nearly three years. And of course, that's different for everyone. But just so you know, it can take quite a while for those hormones to get back to normal. The next reason why so many people experience edema and water retention in recovery is glucogain. And this is something that a lot of people are restricting heavily. So everything with sugar, with carbs is something that many people are cutting out. And even if not, if you're still malnourished, and then you go back to renourishing yourself. These are, these are the things that lead the body to holding back water. Now, what does it mean? Every gram of glucogain that you take into your body holds back three to four grams of water. So like the three to four times the amount in grams of water compared to the amount of glucogain that you put into your body. Now, normally and in a healthy body, the kidney and the liver regulate those fluid balances. So if I eat a lot of carbs, which I actually do, I will not automatically have a lot of water retention because my liver and my kidney are working heavily for me. For a lot of people with eating disorders, those hormones might even have issues or just have been shutting down, like all of our hormones are slowing down when our metabolism is slowing down. So it will definitely take some time for these hormones to get back. Now, you might have heard some people talking about not consuming too many carbs, prioritizing protein, and that would help with water retention. But I'm honestly not a fan of that at all because it only gives you temporary relief. Just as I would never, never tell you to take drainage tablets because it's also a temporary relief and it's also like super dangerous for other reasons. So this is something to discuss with your doctor, but I'm really not a fan of it because it will only give you temporary relief, but the underlying issues are not being addressed. In fact, your body will prioritize carbs. Your body needs a lot of carbs overall, and especially in eating disorder recovery. So the sooner you reintroduce carbs to your diet, the better, because then your body can actually properly work with it, rebuild your organs, and make sure that your body will eventually come to a point where it can handle that, as then your body can rebuild and restore properly and actually handle carbs better than avoiding them. I did touch on reduced muscle mass before, and another reason why that can have an impact is because reduced muscle mass can have an impact on the circulation and the slower our circulation is, the more water our body will automatically hold back. A lot of people with eating disorders or with a history of eating disorders can also experience a slowed down digestion, which also is because your body wants to 
make sure to save up energy, to slow down everything. And that can actually take a long time to, you know, rebalance and to get back to normal. And slow down digestion can also have a big impact on water retention because first of all, all the nutrients are being absorbed differently and your body is just like overall slower. It also has an impact on the circulation again. And this will lead to more edema and a longer water retention. So now that you know all these reasons, it can sound very scary and it can sound like a lot. The key takeaway here is that your body has an immense power of rebuilding itself. I've seen it in so many of my clients, I've seen it in myself. My body was able to restore nearly everything, which is truly amazing, but I also had water retention for a very long time. There is another metaphor that I like to bring up here so that you can maybe change your perspective on water retention a little bit. Because I know that it's painful, I know that it's annoying, and I know that it can mess with your body image, but I want you to understand that your body is doing that in order to help you. Because the more water we hold back, the more or the faster our cells get the opportunity to heal. Not only do they get rehydrated, there's also more fluid so that more nut nutrients can get into the cells. This is actually a metaphor that I like to use with clients a lot. There's a scientist who did a lot of research on eating disorders and one of the metaphors that she uses a lot is if you have ever been to Venice in Italy or if you've seen pictures of Venice, you know what I'm going to refer to. So Venice is a city with a lot of canals and with those little gondolas, those little boats that you can take a ride in. So imagine your body being this kennel and imagine those gondolas being the nutrients that want to go to your cells. The more water there is, the better those gondolas, those little boats can actually flow in the water. So this can be another reason for your body to make sure that your cells are rebuilding faster. Recovery takes time. Recovery does not happen overnight. It does not happen in a few weeks and also normally does not happen within months. The reason why it can take so long is because your body is very smart. Your body's number one priority is that you survive. And so it will not prioritize everything that you would like it to prioritize right away. It will prioritize the main things that it needs to survive, which is making sure that it holds on to a little bit more of the calories that you take in, that it holds on to the water, and then it would, will very, very slowly start to rebuild stuff. But even the start of the rebuilding progress can take a while because your body does not know if it's a famine in the outside going on or if you are the person who's not giving it enough food. So in many, many cases, starting to rebuild the body happens like month and month and month after being quote unquote weight restored, which is one of the reasons why some people put on more weight after recovery, because the body is just like trying to hold on to everything. The body really needs time to trust you again, because again, it doesn't know if there's still a famine going on. So in that case, it wants to make sure that it doesn't put all the energy into rebuilding and then another famine period will come and it kind of wastes that energy. So that is one of the main reasons why it can take so long. To me personally, I did start recovery in February and I went all in in April and gained a bunch of weight very quickly. So the first summer in eating disorder recovery was very, very hard for me. Not only because I immensely struggled with my body image and I was also very depressed. I had a lot of emotions coming up. It was just overall a very hard time. And on top of that, I had a lot of water retention. I felt so uncomfortable. I was sweating all the time. I felt like I couldn't even walk a few steps without being super exhausted, which is actually something so common in recovery. And back then I didn't know that my body just didn't start to rebuild muscle yet. So of course everything felt weaker because my body just needed more time and more nutrition to start rebuilding this muscle. But back then I didn't know that. So I was very ashamed and I just like slowly and over time found like a few things that helped me to feel a little bit more comfortable. Of course, that didn't make the water go away right away. That didn't solve all my problems, but I allowed myself to wear comfy and white clothes. I'm personally not a fan of like challenging everything at all. So if you're already choosing recovery, if you're already resting and making sure you eat enough, I don't think you have to expose your body right away. I don't think you have to wear super tight clothes right away. This is something you can work on later in recovery, but it's also never wrong to just choose comfy clothes and to just choose 
wider clothes as long as you feel more comfortable in them. So what I did was I was wearing a lot of white clothes. I made sure to still drink a lot because actually the body still needs to drink a lot to just get everything going. So I drank a lot of water. I really tried to move as little as possible, to not walk, to put my legs up, to give myself cold feet bath, to take a cold shower. If you feel comfortable to go into a lake or like some water right away, I know that this can be challenging because a lot of people struggle so much with the body image, but take it easy for yourself. You started recovery, you started this process that is amazing, but scary and hard at the same time. Yes, your body is changing. And yes, your body is probably changing in ways that make you feel uncomfortable and you would like to change that. But part of recovery is actually to accept that and to trust your body. And I do know how hard it is. I'm really not trying to say like, oh, you just have to like trust the progress and then everything's gonna be fine. Of course not, because it's not that easy. There's a bunch of things, a bunch of exercises that you can do. There's a bunch of things I'm doing with my clients to redirect the thoughts, to make sure that you're focusing on the outcome, to make sure that you don't lose hope. But at the same time, you will have days where you feel frustrated, where the water intention might be painful, where other things in your body just might make you feel so uncomfortable. And I do understand this. I just want to make sure that you don't give up. Let me know in the comments if you have experienced water intention or if you're currently experiencing this. I just want to mention it again at the end. Please always make sure to see a doctor. Even though water intention is very common in eating disorder recovery, there are cases where it can be dangerous. So I really want to make sure that you go to a doctor, that they check your heart, that they check your electrolytes, because we really want to avoid that we're not seeing anything. That should always be the number one priority. And then afterwards, when you know that you're safe, try to focus on why your body is doing that. Instead of getting mad at your body, try to focus on the fact that your body is trying to heal you, trying to save you and go from there. I really hope this video gives you a little bit more hope and this video helps you to understand your body. Let me know in the comments if you have another question for me, another topic that you would like me to touch on, and I will see you in the next one.